Hi there, this is Dana. In this short video, I'm going to go over the pros and cons to buying stitching kits. As recently I've been asked quite a few times about purchasing kits, and I thought I would give you some information about the pros and the cons of, of both options. So first up, the reason that kits are great is you can get everything you need in one place. I mean, that's the obvious answer, right? I mean, like, you know, uh, there's definitely a convenience factor to getting a kit. You can buy everything you need from one shop. You don't have to worry about um, missing anything. Like if you're a beginner, um, you might not know about all the other tools you'll need, like hoops, stitching frames, scissors, needles, all the things. Uh, you could buy those all at the same time, or uh, like when you're getting a kit, or you can just use what you already have at home. Uh, I do have a tutorial on the basic cross stitch materials. Uh, if you are brand new to stitching and you're not sure what materials you need, I'll link that in the, uh, the description below. If you're a totally new, brand new beginner to stitching, I actually do have a class on cross stitch fundamentals uh, on Skillshare. And in that class, I actually show you all the materials you'll need, how to read your pattern, and the patterns included in the class, and even how to finish off the back of your hoop for presentation. So that's an option as well, is like learning what materials you're going to need and then buying them individually rather than getting a kit. But uh, right now we're talking about the pros of getting kits. So another pro of getting a kit is uh, some companies like Gecko Rouge, they only sell kits. Um, and I've heard uh, that sometimes people have a problem with this, but the reason is it actually protects the copyright of the patterns and the artists that they license from. So Gecko Rouge and other companies like Pain Free Crafts and stuff, they actually uh, pay artists to license their artwork to use in the kits. And the artwork is just spectacular and stuff that you're not going to see anywhere else. So the companies that do this, uh, they actually will protect the artists and their own company by doing this because what they actually do is uh, on the thread sorter, uh, they actually won't use like say the DMC color numbers of the flosses, like the actual flosses, that, color numbers that you would uh, see in a shop or on the labels. They'll actually use their own symbols that are in the pattern and that way people can't um, can't basically, if they get a copy of the chart, they can't replicate the chart for other people to use because they don't know what colors have been used because they're using their own symbols for the color. So again, this protects the company and this also protects the artists. You know, the artists, you know, are risking their reputation and stuff as well by working with, with companies. So it, it protects everybody. So that is a totally valid reason for why some, some companies only produce kits. Uh, another good reason for buying a kit is sometimes, and I'll go into this a bit later as well, it can be less expensive to buy a kit than the materials on your own, like say for a gold work design. So if you've never done gold work, uh, gold work uh, threads are sometimes sold either by length or by weight. So if you only need a tiny bit of one type of metal thread, but you have to buy a minimum amount from a supplier, that can mean you spend a lot more on your materials than you otherwise would have if a kit had been available. You know, obviously having leftover gold work materials is just a terrible shame and oh, whatever will you do with beautiful extra materials? I know, it's tragic, right? Um, of course, this doesn't apply to more common stitching materials like DMC floss, which is actually really inexpensive if you actually calculate it out. Like even at a dollar a skein, it works out to two cents per single strand meter, which is nothing at all. So I mean, if you end up with a half of a skein of floss left over, you know, it's not a big deal. Whereas if you have to buy, you know, a lot of gold work materials just to get a tiny little amount of them, that can actually add up quite significantly. So another uh, type of option for kits is what I'm going to call a hybrid model. This isn't an official term. This is just what I'm calling it. So like, for example, if you go to lovecrafts.com, it's a company in the UK. Um, the designers are chosen by Lovecrafts to sell their patterns on the site. And, and I'm really grateful that they approached me to do so. It's a really, really lovely company. And what, what happens is when we're sending in all the pattern information that gets uploaded onto their website, the designers can provide information such as what flosses you need and how many skeins you'll need. So you can see in this video scroll of my Eva face pattern, it's one of my uh, Cheeky Wee Lass collection patterns, 
those Scottish insults, you can actually see that you can automatically add all the floss to your cart and the pattern size is listed as well so you can buy any fabric of your choice at the same time. So in this case you can select automatically select all the floss to get added to your cart and then you can choose your your fabric and needles and hoops and all the things like that separately if you want. So in my case if someone was to buy the pattern from Lovecrafts, they get the pattern as a PDF download and then all their materials will be shipped and on their way. So, I mean, you still have to wait for the materials to get to you, but it's all coming as one shipment, which is really handy and often like buying the floss and things like that. I just find tedious, especially if there are a lot of colors in a pattern. Um, in that particular pattern, I've actually got notes in some of the patterns where there's specialty flosses required that I couldn't add into the descriptions to automatically get added to your cart, things like uh, metalwork threads, uh, Japan threads, things like that. So some of them will be actually in the description of the pattern as well on Lovecrafts. Um, and if you don't know how to calculate your fabric size, I actually have another tutorial on that and I'll put a link in the description. So that is something that you can figure out on your own as well. It's not impossible to figure that out. So and obviously there's pros to getting kits and there's also cons to getting kits. So the first one is you don't get a chance to experiment with new tools like different sizes of needles. So this is a really fun part of being a stitcher or crafter is you know trying out new materials and tools and seeing what works best for you. There really is no such thing as one size fits all. Like, um, you, or you may not realize that the tools that came with your kit aren't great quality so you get frustrated and give up. So like say sometimes uh, cheaper needles like, if, I don't know about you, but if you, I've got quite acidic hands, so if I use inexpensive needles, then my fingers actually wear the finish off pretty quickly. There's certain needles it doesn't happen with if they're higher quality, but then the, the needle almost gets, I don't want to say sticky, but it creates more friction going through the fabric and that it can, can create issues when I'm stitching. And same as if you're getting sort of um, inexpensive fabrics that can create more friction when you're stitching. And I'll go into that in a little bit. But yeah, I mean, trying out new materials is part of the fun of being a stitcher. And also, some designers simply aren't capable of producing kits for a variety of reasons. So if you decide to only purchase designs that are kitted, that really, really restricts your ability uh, to get a wide variety of designs that are available for you, and a lot of modern designs as well. Like Some companies are able to kit them, but some aren't. Uh, like for myself, I was hurt in my military service, which many of you know, and for me looking down, like physically looking down and doing stuff that's heavily upper body focused, is really difficult and can get painful really quickly for me. So for me, in order to uh, get in all the bulk supplies from all around the world, you know, have somewhere to store them in my tiny apartment, spending hours putting kits together, like cutting floss to length, making thread sorter cards, printing the patterns to commercial quality, cutting the fabric, um, and packaging everything. Like that's a lot of looking down and a lot of upper body work. And that would just be simply impossible for me. So for me, like I'd have to rent space and hire staff to do that, which would be a massive expense. So the kits would have to be priced to accommodate that. So for me, like even walking to the post office once every couple of weeks is hard, even though it's only a few blocks away. So for my business model and capabilities, digital only is how I have to work uh, or I can't do it at all. And many other small designers are in a similar situation, even if they don't have physical challenges. So creating kits is actually a huge undertaking. It's really easy to underestimate how much work goes into that as a small business and how much outlay has to happen for all the supplies. Like, you have to get wholesale accounts with companies like DMC and fabric companies shipping all of your goods in if you're international and then shipping out internationally as well and all of the costs involved with shipping. It's, it's a massive thing. So it's, for some companies, it's just simply not feasible to provide kits or physically shipped items. Uh, another good reason that kits you know, can be problematic is your local shops. Could you really use the support right now? Um, particularly standalone craft or needlework stores like your locally owned ones. Uh, and usually the staff in the specialty stores are really, really helpful. 
Like uh, I found most locally owned shops are run by really, really well-informed crafters and stitchers, and they are massive wealth of knowledge when it comes to materials, techniques, all the things. Like they're so good to talk to, and it's so hard to compete against the big box stores with pricing. So I always, but I always recommend people shop locally if they can, like the little local needlework shop or whatever, if they can, just because of that wealth of knowledge and you're supporting a small business. And of course, there are plenty of online needlework shops like 123stitch.com and lovecrafts.com that can supply all your needs if you live, say, in a rural area or you don't have any um, needlework crafting shops anywhere near you. You can buy all of your materials online as well. Uh, another disadvantage to kits is you never learn where to buy the supplies on your own. So you end up spending more money in the long run. Uh, like I said earlier, the kits have to cover the costs of putting them together. So you do actually pay more for kits, usually, like I said, the gold work is an exception, than you would otherwise spend on the materials individually. And then you usually get leftovers that you can use for other projects, which is a good thing, you know. And also, the quality of the materials in kits are often much lower than you'd buy on your own. So an exception to this are companies like Gecko Rouge who do use DMC floss in their kits, um, but this is pretty rare as it does make the kits more expensive, like I've seen comments in various cross-stitch groups about the cost of say Gecko Rouge's kits or other similar companies' kits, and it's because they're using really high quality materials they want you to enjoy the process, especially for such large patterns. Um, but say many kits like say from China or other countries um, you know where you're not really sure where the materials are coming from materials themselves are being sourced from unknown places so you don't really know whether the floss is color fast or whether it's been dyed using safety standards for the workers and the consumers uh, because dyeing does use some pretty nasty chemicals so you know and whether it's even gonna produce a nice result you know and sometimes like poor quality floss and uh, will tangle more easily or not have a nice sheen. If your fabric's kind of rough, it can actually start to tear at your floss. So your floss starts to knot more frequently or break. Um, so to save money and charge less for kits, some companies will use lower quality materials. Uh, or sometimes kits will supply you with just the bare amount of fabric and floss to save on costs to make them more affordable. But the downside to that is if you run out of, you know, either your, you know, if you screw up your fabric or you don't place your, your project perfectly centered on your fabric, or if you run out of floss because say you made some mistakes and you had to cut some areas out or whatever, if you run out, you either have to contact the company for more, if they're even around, like sometimes kits are from companies that have gone out of business or they're just not responsive to customer inquiries, or you just have to figure it out on your own and make do on your own. So, you know, neither one of those options is really ideal. And also another disadvantage is you don't get the experience of seeing what's available in the shops and touching all the pretty fabrics and flosses. Oh my God, like if you haven't been to like a, a, a nice little needlework, specialty needlework or craft shop in the last while, I mean, obviously right now with the pandemic, things are a bit different obviously, but, um, there's some amazing fabrics and flosses out there, like like hand dyed things, and and you know with metallics and beautiful uh, blends of fabrics or of, of fibers for the fabrics, and it's just amazing. And you can touch them and see them and see the colors in person, or even like online, like a lot of shops that specialize in hand dyed fabrics and flosses, they have really really good photographs. And so if you're relying on kits, you kind of miss out on this entire world of like hand dyed or special dyed or even just different uh, variations of fabrics like in one of my collections in the adulting 101 collection I featured uh, Zweigart's splash collection of fabric which was like these beautiful little dots all over it which was super cute so if you're using only kits then that's really limiting you as to what materials you're seeing and getting to play with and it obviously limits you know the creativity you can put into your projects as well so I hope that helps, uh, and I hope you've learned a bit about what goes into putting a kit together and why some, some companies offer it and some don't. So whether your favorite designers do or don't have kits or only have kits like some companies, trust me, there is a method to their madness. Like a lot of companies do want to supply kits uh, because people do ask for them, but sometimes it's feasibly it's just not possible or there are reasons behind why they, they, they can't or don't want to supply kits. 
And for all the images in this video, I've been featuring some of my patterns. Uh, I'll put links to all of them in the video description as well. So I hope you have a great day. I hope that was helpful. Happy stitching!